Hello guys and welcome to a new episode. So in the last episode we made um, some bug fixes including that we aren't able to see uh, any of the uh, power meter when we just don't have the ball and everything is reappearing when we have the ball. We also made it not possible to hold the ball. Oh wait this isn't fixed. Uh, so yeah we need to fix this as well. Because currently we can just hold this for longer. Um, and we don't want to be able to hold this. So what we're going to do is we're going to check after like 3 seconds when holding on max. We want to check if the player is still holding and then just let go. So let's go to our ball client. And on the is powering. Here. Uh, we want to up to the power bar. Um, actually, when we let's think, let me think of something. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and do local. Click count, then we go to one. Then, what we want to check is when we use our input service with the mouse button, um, when we use this input, we are going to, of course, do all of this. And what we want to do is let me see. So we check if we are powering. So F is powering. Um, what we're going to do is every time we click, every time we enable these powering, so every time we set this powering to true, we want to do um, click count plus equal one. Then we want to check in our user input service. We want to store the current one in our heartbeat, I mean. The local current click is going to be this, the click count. Then, if it is powering, so if it is powering, um, let's make another else if else if is powering and has ball and power value is bigger or equal than one then you want to do first of all we want to do power value is going to be equal to one and secondly you want to do test dot delay a three comma function if the click count is equal to the current click then we want to essentially just let go so then when we let go you can see this is what we do so we just copy this and paste it here we try this out so when we have the ball We click, let go for one, two, three. And you can see it lets go. So now we actually want to shoot the ball. Also, so let's go to our ball client again and let's see where we shoot the ball. So here we fire this. Ball value and the up force. It should, it should work though. Yeah. Let's make this a function actually. Uh, local function let's go. And then we just call this here. And we call this. Uh, we call this here. 
let's try. So when we just shoot the ball from normally, you can see that it of course works and we shoot the ball. Now let's see when we hold and we try to shoot the ball and we just wait for three seconds, it's gonna unload our shot. So we can't infinitely just hold it. It's very good. So that bug is also fixed. So then, let's continue on with our server. Uh, actually, yeah, our rolling. So I wanted to make some data we can use in the next few episodes to incorporate spin or style rolling. Because if you've played Build Rivals before, you've probably encountered your style and your flow spins. So let's make a new folder here. Let's call this folder modules. Let's make a module called um, gotcha underscore main. And then in this gotcha module, actually zoom in a bit for you guys. In this gotcha module, we actually want to go ahead and make a sub module for our styles, uh, for our flows. And for our rarities. Let's start with our rarities module. Let's copy the name, paste it here, paste it here. Let's do rarities to rarities, it's going to be equal to table. Actually, we can just use this table up here. It's more convenient. So now we can set up the rarities. So I'm going to start with my uh, common rarity. You can, of course, name your rarities however you want. I'm going to make this a nice simple table. Then I'm going to set the name, which is going to be equal to common. I'm going to set a color. Something nice, maybe like 127, 127, 127. Then I'm also going to put um, the rarity or the chance, pretty much. Chance is going to be equal to. Make sure we don't need the chance here. Yeah. Uh, then we can just copy this. So I'm going to change this to rare. This one's going to be epic. And this one is going to be legendary. Then for the rare, I'm just going to choose a nice blue color. Something like this maybe, and copy my values. For the epic, I'm just gonna use a nice purplish. This is actually see something when I choose my values. So, I've chosen this one here. And for the legendary, I'm just gonna pick this one here. Now, these are going to be my values. And yeah, uh, then we can actually use them in our flows and our styles. So let's go flows and with styles. And let's start with our styles. I'm going to make an example style. It's going to be a table. And we're going to have a name, of course, which is going to be example style as well. We are going to have a rarity. It's going to be equal to rarity starts. Let me make this common. So you got to write this at the top here. And then you can just do rarities.common. Now we have a rarity table. But we're going to do common.name. Make sure you put this dot name here. And then, that's going to be it, pretty much. We also want to put, actually we can't use it like this. 
need to close this table off and just do styles dot styles it's going to be called the table and then put it here and then also do styles dot rarities or chances it's going to be equal to a table as well and now we hold the table with every single rarity so rarities dot common dot name it's going to be like maybe 80 percent or we can just do it's going to be equal to the table okay well you could get just use the rarity name it seems like so what's the common and let's do 80. then we can use of course all the other rarities we have well, let's do 70 maybe no full rare I'm going to put 20, which leaves me with 10. I'm going to put Epic. I'm just going to put this at like 7. And then Legendary. I'm going to put it at 3. Make sure these always add up to 100. So then I'm going to just copy this. And go to my flows. And just paste this. And just replace this with flows. Every single where. And this is going to be our example flow. like this and this is essentially our base layout now we want to incorporate some other things so let's make a new folder and let's make this um what should we call it let's call it assets let's add some vfx under here and let's make a subfolder for our um flows and here we can add a new folder for our example flow. And in there, we just want to add a part. And we want to make the part one size or pretty much everything. So you could, so I'm just gonna show you how, how you can set this up. So when you want to make a, um, like an aura, you just go to avatar, rig builder, build an r6 rig with block avatar then you want to open the rig and you want to delete the humanoid the animates the body colors and pretty much everything inside all of this to delete every single one so you just have to like the bare ribs of the whole character like this so this is going to be your model and then you can put like a particle emitter in here. Like you can just do your whole aura just in this model. And once you're ready, you can just get this model and drag it into your aura. And that's going to be it. So this is going to be our example one. And you can just do your aura here and just then drag it into your folder, which you named how the flow is named. Okay. So for example, if I were to make a new flow called like um, Egoist maybe, <clears throat> I change the name, I change the rarity, I duplicate this, make this Egoist, and then just do my VFX here. And if I don't want any VFX, I'm just going to not put any VFX. I hope that makes sense. And yeah, sorry for this short episode, but... Sadly, I don't have enough time to make a long episode today. Um, but the next episode, we will be um, normal time again. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you like what I do, if you want to support me uh, for free, make sure to subscribe and like, and maybe also comment on this video on maybe ideas that I could do in the future. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video. Peace.